Benito Mussolini has been hung up in the town square. Gaddafi has been Gaddafi. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world, the witch, the proverbial witch, the boogeyman, Monty Williams has been dismissed by the Detroit Pistons. No longer your head coach. We did it. Oh my God, we actually did it. Around 365 days removed from him becoming the head coach at the time, signing him to the largest contract that any coach had been signed to um, ever in the history of basketball. It would it would later be eclipsed by I think both Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich. But the point still remains that. We are a year removed from Monty Williams being the highest paid coach in the history of the NBA. And today he does not have a job. Now, here on this channel where we cover all of the biggest stories and we cover them from all angles, uh, one thing that we've noticed before we get to the actual important stuff as it pertains to this news, uh, one funny thing that we've been documenting is that the language between the agents and that they feed to Woj has been really interesting. So Monty Williams, add him to the list of coaches that were not fired. Get your fucking facts right. Get your facts straight, folks. Fake news. He was not fired. He was dismissed. He was dismissed. We are exactly two weeks removed. It was 14 days ago today that we heard that the Pistons officially were evaluating Monty Williams' job as the head coach uh, because they also had they had just a few days prior announced that Trajan Langdon was the new president of basketball operations. Uh, Troy Weaver was out of here and we were kind of like, okay, so this next domino that's going to fall is definitely going to be Monty Williams. So we've been keeping our ear pretty close to the ground on this whole Monty Williams situation to the best of our abilities. And we've said that, hey man, we don't know anything, but we were told that Monty Williams wasn't going to be the coach. And then guess what ended up happening like a week later, he's actually not the coach. And I'm assuming that any minute now we're going to hear, you know, a, a more comprehensive list of the candidates that Detroit is looking at. Right now, we've already heard so far from Vinny Goodwill that James Borrego uh, is somebody that they're strongly considering. James Borrego has already interviewed for both the Lakers and the Cavs job. Uh, I think out of the three, I mean, if, if Detroit really wants to throw their hat in the ring, I think Cleveland is the uh, the most attractive there. I'm pretty sure he's already, there's got to be some sort of a backdoor thing that's already happened there. I'm almost positive James Borrego is just going to be the Cavs coach. So I was told James Borrego uh, Chris Quinn, and then Sean Sweeney, uh, Dallas Mavericks' top assistant, who, if you've been around the block, not too many years ago was actually one of Dwayne Casey's middle to top assistants. Somewhere near the front of the bench uh, was Sean Sweeney during the, the, the sort of the Blake Griffin era of the Dwayne Casey years. So Sean Sweeney really making a name for himself in the NBA. It, it, Sneaky has been one of those it's only a matter of time, guys. Now, I I never profess to know uh, dick or balls about the assistant coaches in the NBA because the truth is there's no way that most of us could know anything. But Sean Sweeney being a Pistons coach and just reading enough about it, like I at least know a little bit about him, so I would be really excited about that. Now, there's also a little rumor out there. There's a little rumor out there that they actually did the thing where they were like, Hey, Cade, what do you want? Tom Gores was the one who made this final decision yesterday. He was like, okay, so we're just going to fire Monty. Then Trajan delivered the news today. And so you imagine the timeline on that was that Tom literally must have just straight up asked Cade, like, what do you want to do? Um, I don't think it's a coincidence, by the way, that they waited for the finals to be done here, especially if you do want the whole JJ thing to be part of this. Uh, then you needed for you needed to wait until he wasn't really uh, a, 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 as tied up with anything. But that's that's the stealth word out there is that Cade was the one who the, at least the players were like, I don't I don't want fucking Monty Williams as my coach anymore. Can we please go do something else? So there you go. There's that. And then you were like, so what the fuck were all those reports from Mark Stein about? Like, it's likely that Monty Williams is keeping his job. So who was that from? Who fed him that information? I, I can't think of the angle on that one. I, I'm 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 lost. I mean, look, it was the worst season that we've ever played, ever, in the history of our franchise dating back to the Fort Wayne days, by the way. Like, that's how we've never had a season that bad. And if you're the Pistons now, by the way, oh my God, the press conference is going to happen. The press conference is finally going to happen. They're going to introduce Trajan Langdon. They still might wait a little bit, uh, you know, once they get this head coaching thing situated. But again, it sounds like James Borrego. It sounds like Chris Quinn. It sounds like Sean Sweeney. JJ, I feel like, is just all but a sure lock for maybe L.A. at this point. But, again, that thing has really been all over the place. But the Dan Hurley thing kind of threw us for a loop. But if you're Detroit, it's like, dude, the boogeymen of yesteryear are gone. If you're a Pistons fan, 
you know, all the shit about last year that, like, you just have a horrible taste in your mouth and you've, like, divested from the team in such a, like, more than you have probably in your entire life because of just how bad they've been the last few years. Well, the GM that's been responsible for it for the last few years, and then the coach who was responsible, again, for the worst season that they've ever played, the longest uh, single, single season losing streak in the history of the NBA, and then tied the single longest overall. Yeah, the guys who were responsible for that are gone. And, oh, we have this, ooh, top five pick, and, ooh, we have the most cap space in the NBA. Ooh, we're going to do this big, sexy swing with it. And, you know, by the, the, you know this time is six months from now, the roster is going to be flipped top to bottom, and we'll have this new coach and, a, you know, a whole new operation, a new, you know, new guard, and we'll be all excited. And, and it is an exciting day. This, this really is an exciting chapter. I guess maybe I just thought it would feel different. Pistons fans, how are you feeling about that? I guess I thought this moment would feel different. Uh, again, that the witch is dead and that Monty Williams is gone and that the Troy Weaver thing happened. And so it's like, wow, we really are turning a new leaf. And this is this is the uh, an indication that it is a serious franchise, at least like they did the serious thing where they fired both of the two dudes that they, you know, you know what I mean? So it's like so all signs are, are indicate that I should be happier about this than I actually am. And I think I'm just kind of like I think you were just like, wow. So the Pistons did like the the morally comprehensible thing and. That's it. I think that, you know what I mean? I think that's kind of it is they just did the thing that they were supposed to do. And I don't really want to sing their praises until there's something meaningful that actually happens because, I mean, we got tricked again a year ago. A, a, a year ago we got tricked. And I don't blame the Pistons for that, by the way. I don't because I would be a liar in, in saying that we weren't. A, man, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. You're a motherfucking liar if you're saying that a year ago when we hired Monty Williams, and yeah, sure, there were some people who were like, eh, I don't know about this. But for the most part, dog, it was optimism was that the vibes were at an all-time high. It felt like, it felt like I was, you know what I was saying a year ago? I said, this feels like what a serious franchise does. When they feel like they have a roster that's ready to turn the corner with a bunch of young guys who feel like they're up next. And then Monty Williams happened. And so here I am in 2024, once again, 365 days later, saying the same shit. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Monty Williams is gone. Oh, my God. Monty Williams is gone. Who's up next? Sean Sweeney? James Borrego? Chris Quinn? We'll see.